you don't forget. If you're one of our attendees, good evening. If you don't mind going down to the Q&A um, or the chat and saying that you're here. Um, I am using a different computer tonight, so all my little features are not available and I'm making sure that I have everything good to go. So we just need to make sure that you're able to participate with us tonight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Got it, so you're here, great. Thanks you guys for putting that in there. Since this is a Zoom webinar, we don't um, we don't have the same features as a Zoom, so your mics are off. And I apologize to Mr. Zarabian and Mr. Mergerdichian. We were kicking you out and bringing you back in as we went because we were trying to navigate uh, a feature that is not showing up for us. So, um, and it's still not showing up. So Maria, I, I don't see it. I don't see the translation feature. So if you are in need um, of translation, um, we don't have that feature available tonight for some reason. It's not working on the computer that I'm using. Um, I had a last minute issue and I had to come home. So I'm using my home computer and I'm an, an, unable to have the feature that is on my work computer. Um, but we should be fine. Okay. So uh, good evening, this is our Nearpod, um, our Nearpod training for parents. Um, we have a couple hosts with us tonight, two people who will be managing the session. Um, our main presenter is Marie Bryan. She is one of our amazing toll teachers. She's a science teacher, um, eighth grade science teacher, and has really become an expert on Nearpod since the spring and her work with it in the spring and over the summer doing some independent training and work to make sure she is the expert that she is when we started the year in August. So um, she will be walking you through the app called Nearpod. Um, we also have Jason Sanchez with us. Jason Sanchez is our tech coach at Toll, and he's going to be helping manage anything that you have, questions you have in the Q&A. So if you look down on your screen, you have a Q&A feature. It looks like a small Q with looks like a folders or like a three-dimensional box. You can type any question you have there. You can also, um, we have the chat available so that Ms. Brian or Mr. Sanchez can put information in the chat for you. Um, but predominantly questions, it's a little easier to manage questions using the Q&A feature. So um, Romina, I think you are one of our translators for tonight. I was talking to Maria. I don't, for some reason, I have my settings correct, but I'm not able to start translation for tonight. So uh, Romina and Maria, if you want to step out and um, we will, See if we can, and I'm so sorry to not be able to do that. Um, so Maria said she's going to stay for about 15 minutes. So Romina, if you want to do that as well, then we can uh, sync you up and I will see if I can have any other. I have two questions out for tech support to help me on this. Um, but otherwise, I want to make sure we honor your time and get started. So um, Ms. Brian, it's all you. Thank you, Ms. Delantre. Uh, never say sound dynasty. So, um, <laughs> uh, so welcome to the Nearpod training. So there's two different ways that you can participate today. You can either just follow along on my shared Zoom screen. That will be mostly the teacher view of Nearpod. But if you want to see what your student sees when they use Nearpod, you can go ahead, Mr. Sanchez, thank you. Just put a link in the chat. And if you click on that link, enter your name, you can actually participate in the activities and there'll be a bunch of interactive activities once we get into the sample lesson. Um, so you can see what your student uh, uses and maybe learn how to use some of the tools. So if they have trouble and they might need your help, you know what to do. Okay, so getting started here. Um, you can tell me in the chat since I see um, a lot of us, we haven't, don't have anybody here. How familiar are you guys with Nearpod? Are you new to it? Here, I'll show you the student view so you can see the answers here. Takes a minute. Okay, so one of the nice things about Nearpod is that um, it has these poll features. 
So I see we're new to Nearpod. Okay, no experience, haven't heard of it. Great. So let me show you what we're doing today then. So I'll be showing you the different features and advantages of Nearpod, then teaching you how to use the common features and explaining how to fix the common errors that happen a lot with Nearpod. Okay. So one of the nice things about Nearpod is that it does have a lot of features to support students who might need some help. So you'll see, uh, um, you'll see up here at the top, there's a little book with a sound on it. If you click on that, it actually will read the slide that they're on to the student. And it also has a little dictionary here as well. So Nearpod has built in a lot of features to help support your students. So if your student has a little trouble reading, wants it read to them, they can click on this little book and it'll read it to them. So Nearpod allows teachers to share fun and interactive content with their students. So it's really to make it less of a boring PowerPoint that they just have to read or is read to them. It's something that they can um, interact with. It allows teachers to instantly collect and share answers, which I'll show you a little later, and then track students' comprehension in real time. So for quizzes, it tells you um, what, how, much, how many of them got it wrong, how many of them got it right. And it's really nice because you can adjust your teaching as you go along. If I see my kids got it 100% right, I'm like, okay, let's move on. But if they're not getting it right, I know I need to explain more. So there's two different ways that a teacher can use Nearpod. They can either do it as a live lesson, which is what I'm doing now. So in the live lessons, the teacher is in full control. The students log in just like you have. And then the teacher um, moves the Nearpod along uses, using these arrows and it moves it along for the student as well. So they don't have to really worry about being on the right page because the teacher moves it along for them, which is really, really nice during a live lesson. Um, but there's a different way that you can assign it as well. You can do it as a student pace lesson, which I don't do very often, but I know some other teachers do. And it's basically the same thing. It's the same kind of presentation. Students can just do it at their own pace and then turn it in later. Whereas for the live lessons, once the live lesson is done, the student can't go back into it and adjust anything. So Nearpod is just like packed with features. There's so many different things you can do with Nearpod. So here are a few different ways they have you can use multimedia in here. So they have slides, but they also have 3D things. They have like virtual field trips. You could put audio, video. It's a fully uh, functioning experience here. They have everything that you can't, every type of media you can have almost, you can put in an earpod. But then the other, on the other side, you can also engage the students with assessment activities. So there's open-ended questions where they type in their answers. There's polls like we just saw. There's quizzes. There's a draw, there's draw it where they can actually draw on it. There's a collaborate board. There's so many different things. And I'll show you a few of those interactive activities in just a moment. So we're gonna do a sample lesson. Now, what I like to tell my kids and some teachers do as well is that Nearpod also has, excuse me, Nearpod also has a note taking feature. Um, you won't be able to see it on my screen, but you should have it on yours if you're logged in. Over here on the right, there should be a little page with a marker on it. And this way, I know students can't go back into a live Nearpod after it's done, but they can take notes while it's going along and then save it in their drive or like send it to themselves. There's a lot of different options there. So this is a way that they can keep track of what they're learning. And just to make sure you're aware that 
Um, in the Zoom, I'm sharing my screen with you so you can kind of see the teacher side of it. Um, but most likely when your student is in a live lesson, they will have Nearpod open either on their computer or on a different device. And on the Zoom, you will most likely just see the video of the teacher and of the other students. Um, because once they're on the Nearpod themselves, they don't actually need to see what the teacher is seeing because they have it um, on their own. I have heard from my students that it is easier for them to do the Nearpods if they're on two different devices. So that might be a solution for your student as well. If they get overwhelmed by too many windows on their computer, they could use two different devices and it'll still work. So here is a little dealing with challenges life, uh, life skills lesson. Um, we're not really going to go too much into the actual lesson, but I wanted to show you the different types of activities your kids can be doing. So in a lesson, they'll have slides, just like a normal PowerPoint. But then you'll also have something like this, which is a collaborate board. Now for me, I always say approve student comments before they're posted. This is just a safety feature that Nearpod has. So I can approve what students post before they post it. So they don't post any, try and post anything inappropriate um, and I won't be able to catch it. And then once you enter and your student enters an answer, thank you, Mr. Sanchez, it will pop up here and I can approve it. And then it pops up like a little post-it note. The nice thing about our Collaborate boards is that you get all of these different answers from all of the students and it really helps them start figuring out what, um, you know, what they should be saying. And it's really a good brainstorming technique. And then they can also like posts here. So this is more of a brainstorming. They can also, if they ever need to, almost on almost every interactive activity, you can add a picture. And I see we found it. So if you click down here, you can search whatever you'd like. If um, you wanted to talk about maybe grit, having grit and you find a picture, just click it, click save, and it'll show up here and you can also type into the Nearpod. So you get both at the same time. So if your student's more of like a visual learner and they would rather um, add pictures instead of words, that's a great option for them. Now on Nearpods, you'll have audio and you'll have videos and the teacher should be making sure that the audio will play on all the devices. Here's a feature that your students will see if uh, more often if they have a self-place lesson, if you click on the um, play button on the bottom. Growing a mind. Our minds are constantly growing and developing. This at the bottom is actually some audio that a teacher recorded reading the slide and giving more information. So that's also a nice thing if they're doing a self-paced lesson, teachers can actually record messages for their students as well. And we have a few slides. Then you have a slideshow. If you click on the, on the left here, all these numbered slides. It will basically, it's a shortened um, PowerPoint presentation and it'll walk them through some kind of information. Usually after I give them this much information, I ask them a question. So I have a few of you in this Nearpod if you wanna try out just answering a question the nice thing about Nearpod too is I can hide student names. So I know my students prefer it. Every time I share an answer with my kids, I almost always hide their name. 
so that they don't feel pressure or they don't feel put on blast or put in the spotlight when they don't want to be. And that's really helpful, especially with middle school students because we know how shy they can be. And you'll also see on your side, again, another support for those students who struggle with writing. They can put pictures, they can have it. If they struggle with reading, they can have it read to them. But if they also struggle with writing or they you know, feel like it's too fast to put their thoughts together into a sentence that they can write down, they can also record their audio. So you could have your student just click this and then they talk once they're done. It has recorded whatever they said and they can turn that in instead of actually writing something. So many features in your Pondbook. Now, I wanna show you what it looks like also when you get something on here and the teacher is sharing out. So as you can see, when I share this, you can't see which student actually said that. And it's a way for teachers to get instant answers and actually be able to talk about answers without putting somebody on the spot. Now here's a really cool feature that kids always really like. It's called virtual reality. So it's not loading right now, but basically it's like a, a 360 picture and they can explore an area. So they have that as well. Now draws are probably the most difficult of the Nearpods, a Nearpod interactive things. If you wanna try this out, when they have draw it, I wanna show you a few buttons here. So at the bottom, you have a bunch of different buttons. There's a marker. And with the marker, they can draw, right? And they can pick their color and there's a highlighter. But this is where my students get tripped up a lot is that they'll try to start writing in the blanks if there's a question using the marker. And it's very hard to read and it, they get frustrated, you know, cause it's so hard to write with your mouse. So they actually have a text box feature. So the text box is a capital T, lowercase t. And when they do that, then they, it brings up a box that they can click into and start typing. And then they can put that box wherever they need to put it, like here. And then they click submit and they're done. Okay, I'll let you guys play around with that for a little bit. Awesome. Mr. Sanchez, while we're waiting, was there any questions that came up? I know I'm kind of speeding through this. No. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a cute little face. Okay, so the nice thing about Nearpod also is whatever they have, when you move on to the next slide, it submits it for them. So here's a quiz. This is also really nice. Just super easy quiz. Now they can take answer questions and quizzes just like this. But a thing I like to do if it's just a quick review and I'm trying to get them to memorize, a really fun thing is you can turn quizzes into games. 
So you might see what looks like your child just playing a game, but actually they're taking a quiz in game form. So what would happen is you have some little avatars and they click in and then it would play some questions for them and they have to and they have to answer quickly. So let's just look at one of those. So it gives them a timer and they have to answer quickly and then and then it gets them. And see they climb the mountain, that's why it's called tech. So those are, that's just a really quick run through of a few of the different interactive activities. I know we're coming to the end of our half hour here. So I wanted to show you how to fix some of the common issues that happen with Nearpod. Most of it is that um, internet bandwidth, just like how much information your internet can handle is getting very overwhelmed recently. Um, happens to me, happens to everybody. So one of the most common things I hear every day is that a Nearpod won't lo load or they have a blank screen. It literally, the, sc the screen is just white. Um, what I, I tell my kids, wait at least a minute, it might still load. Sometimes it just takes a while to load. The second thing to try is to click the refresh button here at the top, okay? or they might need to leave the, leave the Nearpod and come back in depending on how many tabs they have open, how much work their computer has been doing that day. They might need to leave and come back. But if it's a live lesson or even during the self-paced, it'll still bring them back to where they were or where the teacher is at that moment. If the Nearpod kicked, kicked me out or the window closed accidentally, I always hear that also. As long as they come back in as soon as possible, the Nearpod will be on whatever side the teacher is on, if it's a live lesson. And again, we'll take them back to where they were if it was a self-paced. Sometimes, especially with the draw-its, the students can't see the buttons at the bottom or like something is hidden on the page that they should be able to see. And it's because the, their window is zoomed in. So on the Chromebooks and the PCs, if they hit control and zero on their PC or control and minus, it'll zoom out that screen. So they should be able to see what they need to see. So mainly it's refresh, just come back in, leave, come back in, or zoom out your screen. Those are the three main fixes for Nearpod. It's pretty, um, it's pretty easy to use, especially for students. So um, you really shouldn't be hearing that many issues with Nearpod. Um, personally, for me, how teachers, a teacher can use Nearpod to grade is there are reports that teachers can download that show student answers to every interactive question. Question. If you participated today, I have that information now and I can look it up later. And then it also gives you a percentage that shows you how much the student participated. And what I do for my grading is I look at that percentage because I give them participation points for doing these live near pods. So I look at the percentage and then if they didn't fully participate, I take some points off and their grade is grade reflects how high their percentage is. Um, and that's pretty much it. it Nearpod is, has a lot of features, but it's pretty simple to use.
Uh, any questions? Thank you guys for sitting and listening through my very fast presentation. No, I thank you, uh, Ms. Bryan. I love watching all the options for all different kinds of learners for kids who are better with oral language versus kids who like to write or the gamified piece that really appeals to some kids who learn through play. I mean, a lot of us learn through play, but some, some as we get older kind of lose that, that instinct. Um, so, so many good features. And I know that at Toll, uh, all, most of our teachers are using Nearpod, including our PE teachers. Um, and I know that other schools throughout the district, since the, the district made the investment in this program uh, for, the, in for every school, um, that it is an app that is used quite frequently. So um, thank you for all those tips and thank you for like the troubleshooting piece. I know sometimes it's the internet access and the internet, just the loading speeds and everything are problematic for a lot of our families and a lot of our kids. It's always good to have that sense of grace and forgiveness um, for things that are completely out of our control, um, including the adults uh, who might be like myself. I had an issue tonight. Um, you know, we just have to make sure we're patient and, and move forward. Um, and supporting kids so that they can learn. So if you have any other questions for Ms. Bryan, you can put them in the Q&A or even in the chat since our group is fairly small. Um, we did record this session so that it could be available um, for future reference and it will be on our website probably in a day or so after the recording processes. It takes a little bit of time to do that. So um, do you have any other questions? Now's the time, if not, um, you can log out and thank you for coming. Thank you for your time, Ms. Brian, for um, our translators who came. Thank you for sticking to it. I, I don't have any, my tech support outreach did not, <laughs> I don't have a response from them. Um, and thank you, Mr. Sanchez, for helping manage uh, the meeting. So um, hopefully we'll see you at the next training if it's hosted by one of our toll teachers. If not, um, I wish you a good night. Good night, everybody.